What I'm going to tell you uh, or show you here today are simply, there's no slides, there's no package or, or file or anything. It's, I'm just showing you some of the content from uh, Eric's literature site and some of the content from Jake's. They both talked about how they create them and what they do to update them and the techniques used. Um, I'm going to talk about it from a consumer perspective in the sense of what's there and why you want to go look at it. Everyone in the room is familiar with the site and everyone in the room has is familiar with and probably has the PPC archive, but they're both from a, from a I want to use the information perspective have changed radically in the last year and are continuing to change a lot. They, they're growing in ways that are consistent with what they do, but not consistent probably with what you expect in terms of the variety and the amount of stuff that's there. So I'm just picking some examples of stuff to show to try and motivate you know, you to go look at it harder. Of course you know what it is and uh, you'll eventually look at it and this and that. I'm trying to uh, drive the motivation to go look at it um, so you have positive reinforcement to look at it again and again and again and continue to contribute to the areas where there are gaps. Jake mentioned a couple of places where there's a missing special issue C of the journals. Um, Eric has there's holes in, in terms of we now sort of have a better perspective of all that's out there and quickly realize that there is even more and what the idea is to kind of motivate folks to go digging through their piles of stuff as I've done a bunch lately um, to kind of send it in to get scanned and added. The, as I've discussed many times with Jake, that there's nothing more frustrating than having a 99% set of what you have. It's like, it's like being a collector. You're just OCD about that one thing. You know, I've never worked so hard, so hard to collect some things that I will never use in my life. Don't even want to use, but I want them. It's like filling the special issue C. Until we get that, it's not complete. So first, uh, I'm starting with some things um, on the literature site. Um, I'm going to give you a couple examples of things that are not new, that have been around in the community for a long time. So why all this work and why, you know, all that? Uh, I can give you one example. Um, the port extender manual, the 41 port extender, is a manual which happens to have been something Jake wrote. And a scan of this has been around for, I don't know, 20 years or something, but it was a crap scan. It was terrible to look at. Um, and showing you these, I can bring this up, sorry. A little bit, I can't even go higher. Well, it's 125% of blank, but. I'm sorry. Since you're talking about that, and you're soon to go home with one of those, mm -hmm. I think what will be needed is a photograph of the clear case one. It, it, time didn't allow. <laughs> no, no, I, I, For sure. I'm just saying that, that, that all of this comes together, there's an opportunity right now that you have a clear case one, yep. that a good photograph should be added into that. And, uh, and the labeling which is in here. Um, it's very relevant to that because one of the things I knew was to come up with some form of labeling, which is why the, the awesome clarity of this. Yeah. Things like this image right here, you could kind of tell what the original scan was trying to show you here, but you really couldn't. Um, and, and Eric, jump in if any of these weird little things I'm showing or have stories relevant. Um, it's just, if so, if you never looked at the old scan for this particular one, oh, you're not yeah. impressed by this one. But if you did look at the old one because you didn't have one, it's just dramatically different. Um, and, uh, and Jake and I were talking about this one. It's a funny thing that back in the day, in the days of the journal, some guy had said, oh, looking at various manuals, this is the, the most horrible manual anyone's ever made for anything. That's <laughs> and, in the journal. I'm sorry? And that's in the PPC journal. And, and at the time, I remember, I, I bought one of these because of the manual. Somebody brought it to the clubhouse, and I looked at it, and there's so much information in here that explains how the page and, and ports and all that work, which wasn't in a document for the 41. You know, there were nine guys on the planet that had figured that out and were busily making devices for it. 
but there was no documentation for it. And this manual um, w w was a, a very pivotal manual in my evolution of loving and, and geeking over this stuff. So it, w it was especially warm to my heart to see when this nice, clean, beautiful one came out. I want to have physical manuals, but when I need to look up something, I go to the PDF. So having pristine, clear, searchable PDFs and the good one for the collection I don't want to touch is sort of the best of both worlds. Are you going to sell your collection now? Um, I hope there's a guy that will buy whole collections, but yeah. <laughs> my collection will be sold shortly after my death. Very shortly after my death. <laughs> so we have. But not until. Are you going to uh, publish Mindy's uh, email address? She said I can't die. Where the contact wins? I'm not allowed to die until after I give her a list of what everything's worth. <laughs> This one you told her you paid for it. Uh, Jake, but I can't go all the way back. When I can't go all the way back because I've run out of backs, uh, you know the simplest thing is I'll just restart. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm not. I'm not in PPC. Never mind. Stupid question. I'm in the wrong place. Um, okay, another example of one that has been there. Uh, is this Joe's book again? The scan has been around for a long time. Um, hey, Joe, do you have a copy of this? Personally, all, all three languages, yeah. Oh, you do. <laughs> well, what's your, I have the French and the English. What, what's your German? German. German. Uh, is this the one that was redone? Yes, or, yeah, it's, this from, is, it's from Joe, right? Th this is so technically a scan, right? Mm. No, it looks like it's retyped. Well, you didn't retype it, did you? Well, it was a fixed scan. Okay. The, there's a whole story there, but the point of it is this is a beautiful copy that is functional and in every way has all of the art and all that. So it's a, it's, there have been PDFs of this around for many years. Again, very horrible, not easy to use, not searchable and all those kind of things. An effort three, four years ago or something resulted in this one. So that's made it in. So on the surface, it looks like a whole bunch of scans of things that have already been around for a long time. But the whole point here is that they're not the same scans that are much more useful and much more beautiful. Uh, another one, where did it go? These have been around for a long time as well. Again, poor scans. Technically, they were in color. I can't say they were black and white, but not really. Um, these are now fully searchable. Uh, you can go to the article and, you know what I mean, you can like print this on a color printer and it's like having an original copy of the pages. So when you those tell me that, go back to the cover, uh, that this, uh, the digest, um, there's a whole series of them, but of all of them, this one is much more expensive. On, on yeah, typically on eBay, yeah, yeah. I think there's eight, eight or nine issues of this. But because of this article and, yes, and the, exactly. the and, and, and it's an interesting article and you know vision blah blah blah. But per se, pound for pound, it's not much better than the others. It's a glorified catalog, right, with with yeah, a bunch exactly, of commentary. Exactly. But because of this, you know, when somebody finds it, sells it on eBay, you'll see one of these issues is ten dollars, but this issue is thirty five dollars, <laughs> and people buy it because if you take people who aren't at all to calculators and or people who are obsessively collecting the good news, you know, the important things, this one's more popular than the other. Yeah, because the author of that is a very famous science, uh, science fiction author, right? Uh, I don't know who. I don't even remember who it is. Who's the author? I, 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 I Gordon Dixon? Huh? Gordon Dixon? Yeah, supposedly. <laughs> Could be. I don't know. I, I, I don't, I've never met him. So another one where it's the same thing that's been around for a long time. Another category is things that have not been around for a long time. Uh, and let me share a couple of those. Uh, I think here's one. Didn't even know this existed. Uh, a manual, such as it is, for the 8K RAM module for the 75. There's not a lot to say. Insert it. You can only put it in one way. There's nothing you can do with it. There's nothing you can configure. But we now have that in eight languages. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, 
a manual that I have used a lot for many years uh, is the fourth ROM. Uh, again, oh, and yeah. by the way, Eric, I have Joe's hand-done annotations correcting this, which I don't know if I, if that's been sent. So that can go in. So it's a bunch of notes, I think, from Bill, weren't they? Bill Wiggs? Weren't the notes? No, not Bill Wiggs. From, from me. Yeah, but who, what, the guy who wrote the ROM is where the notes oh, came from. The, that, that's, that's indicated on the first page, but the notes inside are... Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, I, I recognize the writing and all that. <laughs> but I was looking at this last night, thinking about today, and I have another, yet another thing that can go. <clears throat> Uh, and again, this is another manual that's been around a long time, but this is a beautiful one, and it's much easier to By use. By the way, Wix presented that at the 84 conference in Chicago, and the title of his talk was Synthetic Programming on the HP-7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, which actually, one day I stumbled across the title and went, what? What is this? And I pulled it up and went, oh, okay. <laughs> he got me. It worked. <laughs> I got your attention. <laughs> yeah, it worked. That's the 71, right? Yeah. Wow. How many people use the 71 here? One, two, three. Oh. Put those put those hands up proudly. There's no shame in this room. <laughs> Unless it's like a 9S or one of those. There's an extra 41 around. They'll be showing up on eBay, but contact me for the special HHC discount. There you go. Actually, I'm not going to put them on eBay. Too many. They sell for $500 Ooh, on eBay. Wow. And people buy them regularly, which is... Just so wrong. <laughs> I'll sell mine for ten dollars less than Dan will sell his. So, <laughs> so talk to both of us after the show. Uh, a couple more things here. Uh, for example, um, Eric talked about um, we had uh, all the books that Jim Donnelly had written. He, because of his passion for these things, wrote this. And this is something that Eric had talked to Jim and said, "Sure, everything." You know, that I've written, well, that's fine. He provided it. So there's stuff like this, which is of interest to this crowd. One wouldn't expect it in what is nominally a bunch of manuals online, but things like this are there. So it's not only getting uh, deeper, it's getting broader at the same time in terms of what folks are interested in. I can personally attest to the fact that that machine works because I have turned the crank. <laughs> Um, okay, a couple more things. So you know there's does? some. Huh? You know what it does? Yeah. It's bad because that engine. Polynomial It generates polynomials. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some things that have recently made it in for that example, have been not present for a long time and long sought after by some of us OCD people. Um, CMT made a, a product for the 71, which is basically the 11C, 12C, 15C, and 16C in two different versions, but it's relatively, uh, let's see, for about 86, a guy named Chris Kapener released an RPN program that was a binary and it was written in, in assembler. Uh, but it was very, it was not very deep and it didn't use everything. So, any 71 fan always thought it was a great machine, but always felt left out by being able to RPN, and despite Joe's heroic efforts to promote calc mode, <laughs> nah, nah, it didn't, wasn't going to do it. So, CMT brought this out relatively late in life, and it's great. I got a copy uh, eight or nine years ago. I, I got a module and the overlays, but no manual, and the guy that had it oddly had two chapters of like, well, you can see here because the indexing and stuff that Eric's does. He had two portions of two of these chapters on, um, on PDF, but not the rest of it. And the obsessive nature of collecting, but also just wanted to use the thing thoroughly, led to this. And this was one of the items revealed in, um, in the process Richard described, where all the items that were going to Adam were first going to be scanned. This went to Eric, he scanned it. And so now it's here, which is, to some extent, a, um, uh, a, a pattern that you're going to see a lot. Is a lot of these things that are coming to light are really a product of contributions by multiple people within the community. Richard was obsessive enough to save it. Eric was obsessive enough to scan it, make a beautiful document. Did you, did you trim the, the binding out of that? I think. Yes, but very nicely done. Was that combo? I can't remember. 
Uh, cult, yeah, yeah, cult, so yeah. Do any I don't think it was though, was it? Oh. I think I think it was cut. I don't remember, but anyhow, it's it's very nice. I like the way you know. That's a good example of one that may have had to have been cut to be shared. Well worth it. I can, I can look it up. Um, so this is an example of something that has been long missing from the online available to everyone until recently, but now it is. Um, uh, other stuff that is new to the area is stuff that certainly doesn't exist almost any place else. Uh, Richard had some stuff in his archives of basically application notes for the HP 46. Uh, is one of the, are those in the back? One of them is a 46, right? Yeah, so most people don't even know what it is. Basically, it's a printing 45, but with a few other little things thrown in too. Pretty rare, desktop and all that, but the machines seem to be pretty resilient. And it's like application notes for using an HP 46. Probably not available, you know, may exist in some collector's pile, but probably doesn't even know it, sort of thing. So suddenly, this kind of stuff, you know, this is, the heart of what a lot of us like to do, get a, get a machine and sit with the old manuals and all that and just go through some of this stuff. It's just satisfying in a way that, that our, our wives or husbands don't understand. <laughs> um, a couple more things. Um, early in the life of the 48SX, um, Jan Rittenson took the concept from the 41 of the machine language development lab and made a card which basically was let you do on-device development in assembly language. Um, I remember waiting months for this to come out and buying it and having it, um, accepting full well I would never grasp all of it, but still wanting to have it. And it's been saved all these years, and it just seems to not, you know, maybe I was the only one that bought it. But now it's available, everyone can play with it and copy the cards and so forth. So another example of stuff that's new in there. Um, classics like this are there. Everyone has a copy and this and that. Now fully searchable in a way that works. So a big improvement. Um, here's another one. This is interesting. I'm going to be putting an article on the museum forum uh, shortly. Um, a guy named Ted Beers, you can see right here, Ted Beers, um, his dad, Thomas Beers, is a professor at Purdue in Forestry, loved HP calculators. His son, Ted, went to Purdue in, I think, electrical engineering. Um, he was ingrained with a love for HP calculators as well. He ended up going to work at HP uh, in Corvallis. I think, I, I couldn't have this wrong, but I think initially he was in uh, customer support and um, he was, uh, he eventually ended up in the lab but while he was in support and so forth, he wrote a, a variety of things. One of the best uh, Star Trek landers, uh, uh, landers, uh, um, lunar lander, Star Trek games uh, thing, like in the ilk of the lander sort of thing. But, but it, it was unique in that it had a play sheet that had barcode scanning for you move. Like, you know, one of the barcodes is fire phasers and, then, you know, and one of those sort of things. So you can play this game with the wand. He also wrote a, pro, uh, a user library program called Solve It, which was the first multivariable solver on any of these platforms, eventually morphing into the 71 solver. Joe, what, uh, what's his name that wrote that? Um, Chris Bunsen. I'm sorry? Chris Bunsen. Thank you. Chris Bunsen, which is still on the, we're trying to find that, but everyone now knows it as what eventually became the Pioneer Solver. And then in the you know 48, 49, and so forth, the multivariable solvers. Uh, but the tour de force, he and his dad created this product called OS41, which this manual is uh, it's right there in front of me. 480 pages of uh, and it's function by function. It's not a huge number of synthetic techniques and all kinds of other things, but the idea is a more a comprehensive and holistic way of using the 41. Um, yeah. For what it's worth, ages and ages ago, and heaven knows if I still have it anywhere, but on the user's library, 
there was actually a basic language written in user code for the 41, Jeez. which I had. I think I it was thought. slow. <laughs> yeah, it must have been like I'm just one. saying. <laughs> so, so OS 41, the idea of this is uh, just a different way of approaching using it. Instead of, I want to move a file from tape to extended memory, what was that command, you know, whatever. This is more of an interactive, like of a shell, where I want to copy, where do you want to copy from, you respond, where do you want to copy to, and it builds all that. So it's just a, a, a large number of functions that put you in a different environment. But it's so much user code that to have all of it in there becomes problematic with how much space is left and things of that nature. So um, this has been a target of, I think everyone here knows Angel Martin, the, the creator of so many 41 ROMs. This has long been on the list, and what, one of the things that motivated me to hunt down Ted Beers and get a hold of him was Angel has always said, if anyone can find OS 41, I will make a ROM out of it, and then you can add that to your CL, the 41X, or V41, or whatever. And he is actually working on that right now, so within a couple months, a ROM version, but that's going to come out. Again, this is uh, an impressively just, you know, 500 pages of this, um, a, a significant, you know, it's, it's this thick. This is, uh, I don't know if this is the one, but this is uh, a book that had the, um, the red barcode uh, stuff in it to prevent, and, and I wasn't, I, my suspicion was it was either an attempt at copy protection or that somehow red background made scanning more accurate, one or the other, because why else would you use red pages? And, and Ted said, yeah, it was, it was definitely to prevent because, you know, you could put all this work into a product and everyone could just copy it. You know, it was the discussion yesterday of let's make it easy for anyone to load it and steal it. Um, there may be one or two others on here. Uh, this one's an interesting one. Uh, and here's another uh, one where it's sort of a community effort that resulted in this. This is a document that... Joe got somehow, mysteriously landed on his desk one day, um, long, long, long ago. And uh, when he was moving to the new Abbey, he said, I gotta get rid of some stuff. And I said, throw nothing out. Throw your, you know, send your trash to me, and I'll decide what's trash and what isn't. This is one of the things I found in there. Sent it to Eric. This is one of the earlier ones through the whole scanning and whatever process. And the outcome, um, I knew, Eric Smith would be interested in this, uh, Christophe Gisseling would be interested in this, Jean-Frost Gagné, the people who have all put a lifetime into making emulators and stuff. Was the, and the question is not, is there something in here you don't know? The question is really more a matter of, it's interesting to see that this is all in one document that probably hadn't made it out. Had you seen it before, Eric? Just out of curiosity? I have not seen this one. Yeah, it's just remarkable how little it had made it out. It's it's late in the in the cycle to talk about what's going to come from this, but it's out there now. Um, all, all three of the people uh, that I sent it to, I mean, everyone can get it. It's on the list and so forth. Um, and that's kind of part of what I'm trying to say is that the list doesn't come after you, but there's a lot of reasons to go look at the look at the list. All three people that got it said. No, nothing new here, but thank you for sending it. I'll get back to you if I really don't care about it, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Uh, okay, so that's a reason to spend more time looking at the list uh, at literature.hpcal. Uh, Eric, I meant to ask, now that it's promoted and yeah. whatever, is there going to be a link to it on the front of yeah. HPCal? I think I'll probably make a post in the forum and the news group. And, the and then right on the front page of it. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, okay, and then Jake's... Um, and um, I'm an underground contributor to this stuff because this non-manuals, not really PPC, but needs a home somewhere that everybody can, can get at it. It started with I would buy stuff on eBay and it would have documents and manuals that I had never seen before, never knew existed, and thought everyone's got to have this stuff. So I'd send them to Jake and it would just, there was no category for it, so it started off as a miscellaneous thing. And then it eventually morphed its way up to the thing he showed you yesterday. And he gave you a peek at in the future where this table has become four or five tabs worth of information just because there's so much more of it. Um,
But this is some really good stuff. There's some great stuff here. This is one that I felt I just loved when I got this one. Like this goes back to who here remembers ever seeing this brochure back in the day? I sure don't. Yeah? Good for you. I, I just had never seen anything like this. A um, couple more. And I'm tending to click on the green ones because they're new. You know, they were added in 2.39. Um, but there's some others here. That... Give me a second. This was one of the ones that I remember seeing back in the day but couldn't get my hands on. I went to a store and somehow a retail store, I think Jordan Marsh in New England, had this at the counter for the HP machines. And, and it was like, you know, um, uh, with the, the chain, you know, at the counter sort of thing. And I can look at it, you know, and it just, it, somebody who was related to the calculators at Jordan Marsh was a geek because putting a piece of this on a retail counter is just really, and I remember reading through and going, this, this is so cool. Can I have this? You know, is about what they said. No, so 40 years later when I saw it, I had to grab it, had to go in here to get shared. Um, this is an interesting one. Uh, at first blush, hmm, that doesn't look like an HP brochure. Oh, well, that's because it isn't an HP brochure. No. Though I suspect money changed hands. Um, just a very different view of what we all think of. You know, well, we can put the 45 up against the TI, whatever. It's a very different view of stuff. Well, wait a minute, what's an HP 85 doing in a calculator brochure? Interesting, wait a minute, that's 41 stuff and an HP 85. And wait a minute, you know, wait, look, other machines. Yeah. It's just a very non-typical approach. It's an interesting catalog. Again, who is, who is this company? Don't know. I think money changed hands, but it's a cool catalog and, and it's just not the kind of thing you see often. Um, there's kind of vanilla stuff like, you know, the brochure for the Voyagers. Um, there's some other things. This doesn't clearly fit into the, oh, come on, where's the girl? There she is. Uh, it doesn't fit into the, it's not a brochure, it's not a manual, it's, it's more like a white paper that was done. But, you know, this picture I love. <laughs> I love that picture. Um, interesting materials, all of these. Um, one or two more. You know, stuff like what are the price lists, and there's a ton of price lists at different years. But what the high value of these price lists is what was, you know, how many solution manuals were there really, and what were the part numbers, and so forth. These are really valuable if Sylvain is too busy to answer the email, just for the record. Because <laughs> he's sort of the gold reference on what could be collected. Do you want to show uh, an catalog? Or? I'm sorry? Do you want to show an electric yeah, catalog? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get there. Uh, let me come next into here. These are, um, and Jake put this slide up, but these are multi-issue catalogs, brochures, newsletters, things of that nature. Um, and you'll see, like, for example, professional computing, which I don't know how many people here remember it and looked at it, but anyone in this room is interested in most of what's in each of these issues. We still found some other issues to fill in, stuff like these two were just done. Um, one of the issues, uh, I think this one, I think. maybe it's... No, nope. I'll find it. Only twenty to go. <laughs> no, it must be here. There it is. Uh, yesterday, Chuck did the presentation on the IPC follow-on, 
I had this copy for a long time, but when I got uh, Integral uh, right here, when I got this, it was like, you know, you can look at a magazine and you're not interested in the content, and a year later, after you got a new thing, that magazine suddenly is more relevant and interesting, and it's like, how did I miss that article? Well, I skipped past it. Um, so it has some interesting stuff on the Integral, and um, allusion to some of the issues that Chuck talked about, where they were pressured to not put features in, things of that nature. Um, you can see the press kits um, uh, has blown up dramatically um, from some of the stuff that Richard had. This is an interesting selection of stuff I got off eBay, an eBay site uh, in uh, eBay UK, I think. Um, brochures I've never seen before in my life. Um, you know, a, a whole brochure in the 75 I've never seen is kind of amazing. Uh, and it was, a, it was a local, it was a, you, you know, European market focused thing. Um, Electech, as Jake mentioned, the other calculator catalog thing. Um, and, and this is one of those ones where, uh, so close to having all of them, I uh, encourage and ask anyone to, you know, if you have one somewhere, please look at which ones are missing. You can look at, you know, put the, the thumb drive in and check them. Um, and if you have missing issues, pardon me, please uh, send them off to Jake to add in and contribute to it. The only, the only items we have that are going to be in the next version that are not on this chart are number three and number 14. I think number three was 81, wasn't it? Like right here, if I remember. Yeah, right. And then 14 finishes the uh, An interesting thing Jake mentioned yesterday, that none of these catalogs have dates. And if, when you first look at it, it's like, wh why don't they? And it's because it's the brochure that you get in the mail to hopefully run out and buy today and then throw the catalog out because there's another one coming in another month or two. They didn't have to tell you in June of 2000, or 2000 June of 1989 that it's 1989. Today, we're scratching our heads saying, why didn't they put 1989? Um, that's really it. Um, Again, my objective was to motivate you to go look more closely at these things that you think you already know what's in them, uh, because there's a lot that you don't know what's in them. Um, and part B is to help fill, close some of the gaps, both in the structured stuff, like in Jake's, where there's issues missing, but also Eric Sight makes it very simple to look do a search. So if you go home and you find a manual or a book or a third-party product, just take the title and type it in. And if it doesn't show up in Eric's site, please consider sending it to Eric to scan, include, and so the rest of the community can benefit from it. Because the destruct the what I initially feared of the destructive techniques, I'm like, it's not my manual. It's not going to go there. I really feel much better about and and it really kind of transcends. Unless it's a uniquely valuable thing, it really transcends. The benefit of sharing with the community sort of outweighs the my manual hasn't been touched kind of thing. Oh, you're, you're uh, um, <laughs> I've been worn down. Like, like any abrasive, it's working on me slowly. Uh, I don't think there's any questions. I mean, if anyone has one. Oh, yeah. Peter? Peter? Uh, you talking about Electech? No, all of them, most publications. Oh, oh, oh the brochures. Yeah, yeah. Many of the brochures have dates and undecipherable logic in the part numbers. You know, every week somebody new was in charge of part numbers and had a new idea. You cannot tell. I have multiple brochures with identical part numbers that are very different in content <laughs> and, and, and other way around. But, but a lot of those do have dates in them. Many do not, and all you can do is sort of guess from the content. But, you know, stuff that you have, if you don't see it in here, please consider sharing it. Thanks. Oh, yep. This is really more directed just for the owners of the repository and so on. Their perspective with the user community is kind of overview umbrella. A lot of the stuff that's available is still out there, like at JSTOR and various places that are charged for. And 
their their perceptions on is there any vulnerability or how they look at it that if they start putting things out that can be found and they're in competition with other areas. I personally don't like people charging for something that is once free and all that. Well, that's all right. That's a but, free, free world. They can but try. I also don't want to expose people's ethical considerations because they're going to vary to those who say, but yeah, that's still out there in, in some other kind of a site that also is maintaining costs to make it available to the public as well. Uh, yeah, it, it's not a simple subject because there are people that have a paywall on stuff that various community fans want that isn't theirs and they didn't get permission, but they're monetizing, sharing something that they have no rights to share. To me, that's more egregious than us sharing stuff within the community that we didn't secure rights to, but we're not charging for it. Yeah, and, and nine times out of ten, like when I find stuff and share it on the forum, I will make an effort, many times a stupid one, but an effort to try and locate the author. I will use reverse yellow page, uh, white pages and things like that, and I will put in weeks of effort to try and find someone. Every time I've contacted someone, <laughs> the answer is always the same. People still care? Sure, go ahead, do what you want. I've, I've never had a no of any kind, but if I can't get it, I put it up and I say, I tried to reach the author, couldn't do it. If the author finds this and you know tells me, I'll take it down right away. But until then, it's done with good intention, sort of thing. Different from the people that have a paywall on stuff that they just glommed. You know, they found somewhere oh, yeah, scanned and glommed, and the they're word. charging you for it. Yeah, but it's definitely a, not a simple issue. You've done a tremendous amount of, uh, as most people here in the. Does everyone know that Kim is slide rule at the forum, right? And that all that stuff that gets posted. Uh, <laughs> He, it's it's tremendous stuff. A lot of it's really, really obscure. No, they, they, I got me. Considering what's being said and done here, probably have about a thousand things I'll send out because they're they are hard to come by. I have originals, and I think most of you know when I post, I try to find a site that you can download yep. from. Yep. But uh, that's getting harder and harder to do. So. Uh, I just kind of wanted to get a feel for it. I, I, I'm not looking for an alibi. I'm not looking for permission. I'm just looking at a general ethical perspective, yeah. and then put that into your your position of you know, hey, it can be removed. All it sounds like a, a good way to approach it. So I'll uh, I'll start. Well, everything, yeah, and well, everything that's out there and uh, we've been involved mm -hmm. with is is uh, has been approved. Don't, don't misunderstand. I'm not saying everyone should do what I do. I'm simply saying I just want to tell. I, I don't want people thinking that I'm trying to leverage what they did. Well, I you, tried my best. You've I answered did. it from the question of if it comes, if there's an objection, you, you know, you'll, you'll deal with it. And that's what was important. Yeah. Okay. I, I'd just like to point out I've had similar experiences to you. And when, it, when it's an individual or maybe even a small business or the owner of a small business, like you say, the answer is almost always yes. And I'm not knocking HP here, but when it's a big corporation, the answer is almost always no. And the reason for that is that they run it to the lawyers, and the safe answer is no. If we don't allow something, then we're not incurring any liability. Right, and, and the other big thing with big companies is what, what they fear, because I was on that side for a little while, is if you, don't, if you say yes to this guy and this guy and this guy, but that thing that you do want to protect, people can use it against you saying, well, you let them do it, you didn't pursue them, so we assume that that was tacit approval to do it. And the lawyers just immediately come up and say, just say no to everything, and then there's no liability, and then we're all good. Which so, is... But, so, plus the fact there's, there's copyrights that run out. Okay. So, so like I said, that wasn't on against HP, because HP actually has allowed us to do a lot of things, right. but there are also things that I've tried to push through that they have not allowed. Well, done, and, you know, that's just that's, okay. That's so we've got a chef. We had plenty of time after lunch. I want to make one announcement.